Now, this is an example of finding the sum to n terms of some series, where well, that series is not just a simple arithmetic or a simple geometric series, one like this, for instance, which, which has, intriguingly, some sort of simple progression in the coefficients. Now, I'm actually using an exam paper question. It's the Advanced Higher 2002 number 10 for this. If you look at that question, it actually starts off by saying this. Express the sum to n terms when x is 1. Well, when x is 1, that will reduce to 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way up to n, which is just the first n terms of a simple arithmetic series. And that's one you should recognise. The sum of the first n natural numbers is a half of n times n plus 1. If you didn't, you could always just put it into the formula for an arithmetic series, which is a half n times 2a plus n minus 1d, which of course just stands for the sum of the first and the last terms, where a is 1 and the common difference is 1. So that was the start of the question, and you may be wondering, now what was that for? Was that just a wee teaser there? just so you could get some marks, because there was two marks for doing this little bit, because I'm not actually going to use that to get this expression here it's asking for. Or has it something to do with it? The way that you would find the sum to n terms of a tantalising sum like this, where there's obviously, for instance, a common difference, is to do a subtraction to get at that difference. And the way you can do that is by multiplying all the terms by x, so that when you realign them, like term by like term, they all provide you with that common difference. If you were to do x times it, it's a standard technique, multiply by x so you can realign the terms to get something to happen. We'd give you x plus 2x squared plus 3x cubed plus, and then for this one, it would be n times x to the n. Now looking at the like terms, 2x and an x, 3x squared and a 2x. That would be a 4x cubed and a 3x cubed. There's no partner for this one. You'll see that if you were to subtract them, they'd all go down to 1, and that's what you do. Top, take away, bottom. If you do the sum to n terms minus x times the sum to n terms, you would have, without rewriting it all, you would have 1. There's nothing corresponding to that in terms of x to the power of 0, so that would be 1. What about the x terms? For this, take away that 2x, take away x, that's a single x. 3x squared, take away a 2x squared, that's an x squared, plus x cubed, plus... Now, there's no partner for that. The one before this, here, would have been n minus 1, x to the n minus 2. So multiplying by x to put it in here, that would have been n minus 1, x to the n minus 1. So subtracting all these pairs, this would subtract, this would subtract away from that, leaving you one lot of x to the n minus 1. Then there'd be nothing to subtract this from, so minus n times x to the n. That would be the expression. Now that looks much nicer if it wasn't for this little rogue at the end. But that doesn't stop you from using this pattern which you recognise here quite easily as a simple geometric series. You can find a formula for this that doesn't include that. This just means you'll have two separate parts in your final result. You recognise that as a geometric series with first term 1 and common ratio x which means that quite simply the sum of all of those terms, and there will be n terms there, would be the first term, which is 1, times 1 minus common ratio x to the power n, all over 1 minus x, or the reversal. And then you've got one extra bit to add on. Well, that's not really a problem. That's just an extra bit. Now, that's what this came to. Now, what was that? That's one of them take away x. That's 1 minus x lots of s of the sum to n terms. So take that across and divide, and there's your result. The sum to n terms will be dividing them both by 1, up, by one minus x. The top of that, 1 minus x to the n over, and now that'll be 1 minus x all squared, minus n x to the n all over 1 minus x. That formula's fine, 
as long as x does not equal 1. So there's your formula for x not equal to 1. So what would the formula be for any value of x? Well, there's where that first one came in. You found the value. You had an expression for sn, for the sum to n terms when x was 1. So these two parts would go together. That was the reason for that first little bit being up there. Now, there was a the last part of the question which asked you to evaluate the limit of this sum as n goes to infinity, as n tends to infinity. So obviously it must have something to do with this. Again, not all of it needs to be what you've found so far. You can see that comparing some of these, I've got the 2, I've got the 3, I've got the 4, I've actually got this part of the pattern here would be this part here. I don't have this one though, so the one's missing. But this main body of it, this part in here, actually comes from here. That's a wee extra. That's not in there. So really what I've got here then is the limit as n tends to infinity of... Now, those terms there would be this sequence here, sorry, this series here, but less that 1. So it should be this formula here, less 1. So that first part should be, when you add them up, 1 minus, but then what's the x in this? Well, you can see that quite clearly. I've got my 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4. So the x must be this 3 at the bottom. So that means it must be this one, where x equals a third. So that would be the sum to n terms of one third, which would be all of this, take away one, because the one's not included here, and that sum includes a one, and having this little extra bit at the end, this three over two, n over three to the n. It would be, what's the limit of this as n tends to infinity? Well, I've got a formula for this, there it's there. That would be one minus a third to the power n, so I'll just put the power on that, over one minus a third squared, minus n lots of one third to the power n, so that's just the power at the bottom, over one minus a third, minus one, and plus three up and two n over three to the n. tidy up this term here. 1 minus a third is 2 thirds. Square it is 4 ninths. You're dividing by it, so it'll be 9 upon 4 times that. So that'll be 9 upon 4 times 1 minus 1 over 3 to the n. Minus. 1 minus a third is 2 thirds. You're dividing by 2 thirds, so multiply by 3 upon 2. So minus 3 upon 2 times, and I'll just rewrite that with the n on top of that, n over 3 to the n. Minus 1 plus 3 upon 2 n over 3 to the n. So the limit of this. Now, I don't need to worry about what's n over 3 to the n as n tends to infinity. Is that zero? Do I have to prove that or whatever? Because these two terms are identical. They cancel out. All I'm left with is this. Now, as n tends to infinity, 1 over 3 to the n will tend to zero because it'll become very large. So that means the limit of this, once I let n become very large, will be 9 upon 4 times 1 minus 0. They're cancelling out minus the 1. So it's 9 upon 4 minus 4 upon 4, which is 5 upon 4. That part was worth a mark less than the previous one, and that part was probably trickier than the previous part. But I think overall the lesson is, if you're trying to find expressions, don't try and cram everything into one box. It's perfectly fine to have separate expressions. That wasn't spoilt because it didn't have a 1. Nor is it spoilt by having this extra bit at the end. They are, just what I said, they are extras. <laughs>